Okay, hello everyone, Victor Moore from Excel Moments with the continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. This is challenge 543. Okay, so let's look at what we have. In terms of the data, we basically have three columns, departments, the employee names, employees in those departments, and then the salaries for those employees. So in terms of the problem statement says, find out the top two salaries in all departments. Okay, and this is what the results should look like. So for each department, you list the individuals that are the top two earners. Of course, if you have three here, it just means that there's a tie, right? And then you separate those names by a comma and a space delimiter. So if we take, for example, let me put a filter here and we just decide to do HR. Okay, so for HR, you can see the top two would be Thomas and Olivia, right? So if you check the results, that's exactly what you have. So that's really what the problem you know is it looks like a simple problem but it isn't that simple when you try to do it you know with one formula maybe without helper columns okay so let me go to a new sheet and kind of walk you through my idea as you see at this point that the full credit for this solution cannot be taken by me or i can't take full credit for it i'd give it to john gyro i think vegara dominguez he's um is an excel mvp and he posts very 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 good you know solutions to excel bi's linkedin challenges uh fundamental you know idea or approach to this problem was the same uh, but his was shorter and more elegant in some way than what i came up with at first so um, i'm defaulting to how you know he solved it but i thought it was important you know to give you know the credit there okay so to my approach so the first time i saw this i was like okay well if you have a list of you know departments maybe about 19 of them and then you come here you list them uniquely that just sounds to me like you know what a pivot table would do which is taking you know multiple items or items appearing multiple times and giving you a unique list and then listing you know maybe the particular sub items belonging to those items a pivot table will do something like this summarize by department and you know sum salaries up or give me a count of employees per department what's the maximum salary what's the minimum salary the only challenge with the pivot table is that the pivot table cannot summarize based on a text field if you look at this you realize that yes you know you're grouping by the department and then in terms of what the calculation really is these are text you know which a pivot table will not be able to do but the group by and the pivot by functions can do that so the moment i saw this i was like okay this is definitely a group by you can solve it in other ways but i was like i'm gonna forcefully you know <laughs> use a group by and see how to manipulate it to make it work so let's do a group by you know and then we'll take it you know in steps from there so the first thing i will do is i will do a group by which is just think about it as a pivot if you are doing this in a pivot what will be in your row fields? You're going to put the department there because that's what is being listed uniquely. Okay, so I'm going to put my department in here. Now, in terms of values, values is the field that goes into, you know, the values field portion of the pivot table. Typically for, you know, a pivot table, that would be the numeric field. So that would have been the salary column. But if you look at what we have here as a result, the results are based off what? The employee names. Okay, so employee names is what we're going to the values field. Right. Now, then the function, you have a list of, I think, 14 functions, you know, by default that you could just use. But if you don't like any of them, you could use a lambda function to create a more complicated or more complex, you know, function as the case is. But in this, what do we need to do? If you look at it for each of the departments, it lists the names separated by a comma and a space as the delimiter. That's exactly what the array to text does. Array to text will take, you know, a bunch of text and then it's going to concatenate them you know glue them together and use comma space as the delimiter so with that you're fine let's close the bracket see what we have okay so now yeah there are a few things we need to adjust you know in the group by we don't need this total row right because that's redundant that's basically just listing all the names so what i'm going to do is i'll go in here and then if i go to field headers yes i would say no for field headers why because if you look at what i selected i didn't select the first row Okay, so I would say no field headers, and this is what makes the totals disappear. 
I would say no totals. Okay, All right. So no totals. So now we have something you know close but not correct, right? You can see that I have more names than what I have here. And what's the difference? The difference basically is just the fact that I'm not looking at what the top two. What my formula has done is just to look at HR and list all the names in HR, IT, all the names in IT, sales, all the names in sales. What we need to be able to do is to filter down so that it only shows us the names that are what in the top two. The beautiful thing is that the group by has an argument that can allow us to do that. You notice while I was trying to say what I needed to do, I was using the word filter. Yes, because I was trying to purposely tell you, you know, what argument we are going to use. If you look at, you know, the um, group by, you would see that after skipping the next one, the next argument you have here is a filter array. So what the filter array basically does is that it looks at each row or each record, you know, from your data set. If you put here, let's say you put a bunch of um, one and zeros or true and falses, anyone that has a one, you know, would appear in the calculation. Anyone that is a zero, it's more like saying you have filtered that row out. You don't want that row to be used in your calculation. Let's do something quickly to show you how the filter works. Okay, so let me just create random numbers, you know, zero and one, basically, using let me just say if rand. Let's use the rand function. And just say if rand is less than 0 0.5 do 0 if not do 1 nothing you know fancy okay right so we have ones and zeros so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to come back into this i'm going to go to the filter array and i'm going to select this as my filter array so what this means is that anywhere there's a one yes use it anywhere there's a zero don't use that row just it's more like that row basically is either deleted hidden or you know not in use Okay, so you notice that the moment I did that, I have a much smaller table. Why? Because everywhere that we have zero, it's more like that data, that record doesn't appear in my data set anymore. So you notice I can't even see admin and HR. That's because the only admin person now has a zero and all the HRs also have zeros. Since I use the RAND function, I can use, you know, F9 to randomize. And let's just see what happens. Okay, so you can see as ones and zeros appear now you see now that admin is back because you know the row that has admin has a one if that changes to zero for any reason you know it's going to disappear again like now right so that's how the filter works so what it means is that you just need to have ones and zeros to represent the rows you want and the rows you don't want or basically a true and a false right and once you have that it can help you to then drill you know down as it make your um, you know group by more specific to the people you are interested in so what i'm going to do here now is get rid of you know this portion you know and then let's focus on the actual filter that will make what we need to work work okay great so let's get rid of all of this now let's see you know how to apply it to our particular problem so for us we're interested in top two salaries in the departments so what we need to be able to do is to look at each record and say is this record is thomas you know one of the top two salary earners in hr that's the question if he is i want a one here if he's not i want a zero here or you could say i want a true i want a false it doesn't really matter okay next one i'll say oh is russell is russell one of the top two salary earners in the sales department if he is yes then I want a one. If it's not, I want a zero. So that's the logic of what we need to do to create the ones and the zeros. So we'll take it, you know, in steps. Okay. So now the next question is, how do I know if you are in the top two, you know, salary earners in your department? Think about it. If I drill down to the department and I know who the second highest earner is. Okay. So if the second highest earner in that department earns hundred dollars, for example, it means that anybody who earns either 100 or above 100 is obviously in the top two. There could be ties, so it doesn't mean that there are only two people, okay? So what it means is just look at the department, get the second highest, you know, salary, the number, and then look at the current person you're looking at and say, okay, fine, does this person earn above or equal to this? If the answer is a yes, then it's a one. If the answer is a no, then it's a zero. That's the logic of what we are going to do. So what I will do here is, first of all, let's take, you know, Thomas, the first row. What I need to do is I need to be sure I'm not just looking at, oh, 
is 921 one of the top two across everything because those people are not in his department so i need to be focused strictly on what on hr so what i'm going to do is this i'm going to first of all do this i want to compare this with his department okay so you notice that there will be don't get confused here these results are all you know just for you know thomas but anyway it spills that way so you would notice that everywhere there is an hr it's going to be true so this is true this is true that's hr and this is true these are the only you know people in the department of thomas okay so that's the first thing now if i multiply this by their salaries what do you think will happen anybody who is not in hr you know would have a salary of zero every other person would have you know their salaries that's because i'm on a row you know where hr is the department okay so now let's do this and see so you see what happens so i have 921-357-768 so anywhere the department does not equal the department i'm looking at which is hr in this case because i'm doing this on row two right it's going to be zero otherwise it's going to be the salary itself so with this these are the salaries that i'm interested in the ones that are non-zero so i can just do over this array i can then do a large right so i can say large of this comma two so this will give me the second highest salary you know for that department okay so that's that so if i take this down this will give me the second highest salaries for all the departments one after the other right so now you will notice that each for each department it should be the same so if this is hr 768 so let's look at the other hr is 768 the other one is also 768 because it's the same department so the second highest salary is the same the next thing you now need to test is okay is the salary of that individual greater than or equal to you know that second highest salary if it is then the person is in the top two okay so in this case it means i will just test and say is it greater than or equal to this right okay so everywhere i have true those people are in the top you know two anywhere i don't have true those people are not so if i wanted to pick it off the grid okay sometimes you just press what you don't know <laughs> okay so i think it's back right so if i wanted to just pick it off the grid what i would do is i will come in here you know back to let's go back to the filter portion here right and then i will feed this in yeah i expected that to happen okay so i'm going to come here and i'm going to feed in uh d2 to d20 okay right as my filter so what it means is that anyone that is true you know obviously should be part of it anyone that is not true should not be part so let's see what this gives us so this basically gives us the result we want you can see that it's the same thing here emily aaron karen here you know well slight you know different order but yeah that's not an issue so with that we've been able to get what we want the next step is to say well i don't like the fact that i'm referencing you know true and false on the grid you know i would love to do this in a formula context right you know so that i can feed that into my group by straight away i don't want to point to d2 to d20 if somebody did this d2 to d20 for example everything you know goes you know ballistic so you don't want to do that so that's the next step but we already have the answer so just so everybody's clear we have the answer so these are like i'm just taking it you know next step next step okay so now i'm thinking about it in the context of a dynamic formula i want one formula that can spill across not the way i've done it on the grid where i you know do the calculation once and then i drag it down uh, no i want to see if i can make this you know basically spill right if you look at this formula you will see that the formula from row to row is the same when i say it's the same the only thing that is changing is that here i'm referencing c2 a2 if i go to the next one i'm referencing c3 a3 so that's the same thing it's just that on the row you are you reference the elements on that row but in terms of the calculation that is being done it's the same calculation of course because i wrote it here and i double clicked or i dragged down right so it's the same formula so with that it means you can use the map function the map function just says you know look at this transformation and apply this transformation to every element in this array because it's the same thing okay so i could look at this and say okay let me bring in a map here right i can say bring in a map function give it you know all the uh departments so i'm going to pull up a lambda right and then here so where it says oh a2 to a20 is equals to a2 
because I've fed it with A2 to A20, when this calculation starts, P will pick the first value A2. By the time it's done with that calculation, it will go to the next row, P will pick up the next value A3 and so on and so forth. So it means I don't need to have A2 here, I could call this P, right? Okay, I could call this P and it will reference that. Then here to make it spill, instead of referencing just C2, to do it at once, I will say C2 to C20. So it's doing the entire calculation at once. I will be missing one or two brackets here. So I need to do a red here, do a black. I expect a spill array. Okay, good. I close this. All right. So now I have something that, you know, is dynamic. So it's one formula is sitting in one cell and gives me exactly the same result. It's just like me transforming what I had into this. So I can take this now, this I like. I can take this as my filter expression and bring it in here. So rather than doing D2 to D20, I'll bring something that, you know, you may say is less elegant, but, you know, for my purposes, better. And then let's do enter. Okay, nothing changes, right? Because it's the same formula. Now I can conveniently delete this. Nothing changes because my formula is not referencing that. My formula is basically referencing only the actual data set. Now I'm good. I feel like, okay, Victor, this is excellent. The only thing I would do, you know, to make it maybe more elegant is to use variables. Why? Because I can see A2 to A20, C2 to C20, they appear like multiple times. So just to make it, you know, maybe more readable, shorter in some sense, but shorter is not really my objective. It's really more like, well, why repeat A2 to A20 five times when you can just use a variable to represent it and every time you use that variable instead of writing A2 to A20. That's really why. So I'll use a let function. Okay, let me take this down. And I'll say, okay, let A, variable A, represent A2 to A20. So what it means is that anywhere you see A2 to A20, you can change it to A. B2 to B20 appears only once and may decide to skip that and then just go to C2 to C20 and say, okay, this one appears twice. Let me, you know, make that a variable. I can make C2 to C20, you know, a variable. Okay, not the most descriptive of variable names, but that's fine. Okay, so now what it means is when I come here, where I have A2 to A20, I can just use A, right? C2 to C20, I call that B, I call that B. A2 to A20 again here, I call this A. A2 to A20 here, whether it has the dollar or not, it doesn't matter. This is A. C2 to C20, even with the dollar, is basically the same thing. It's a B. You don't need to know, like, oh, what's happening in there. The point is, I'm just doing a replace, right? I'm just saying, instead of A2 to A20, call it A. Instead of B2 to B20, call it uh, C2, call it B. So now I have a red bracket. I need one more bracket, and I think that should solve it. Okay. And now I have this expression. So with this, I have, you know, something that is fully dynamic and maybe a little more readable, but maybe not. Because when you come in here, it's like, well, what is going on in here? But that's why this video exists to kind of break it down or build it up as the case may be, right? To show you my thought process and then how I arrive at this. So now that you have a formula that looks like this, it's dynamic in the sense that if you have somebody else added to the admin, because admin has only one person. So let's take out maybe Aaron. Yeah, let's make Aaron join the admin department. So the admin now have two people. Okay, see what happens. Automatically, Aaron now falls into the top two in admin. Of course he will, because there are only two people in admin anyway. So the top two would obviously be both of them, and he's no more in IT, so that's why he doesn't feature there. So if I do a control Z, you know, I'm back to what I had before. So this is how you get it done using the group by function. The group by function is really powerful in the sense that you notice it was easy to just get this summary very quickly in one step. The only reason why it became complicated was because we needed to use the filter array to show only the records that meet a certain criteria. But the beautiful thing about the group by, aside being a formula and once, you know, the cell or sheet recalculates rather, you know, it calculates, is that it can also perform calculations on text fields, which is the advantage for me, a big advantage over a pivot table. So that's one reason, you know, I mean a regular pivot table. To be clear <laughs> that's one reason why i love it so so i hope you like this video if you like this video please do hit the like button it's quite a long video but i think it's worth your time so don't also forget to subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out